Hey guys, Tom here with a Pro Tools tutorial on exporting files and getting them to your client. So whether this is the end of your first mix or your 50th mix, it's time to get this bad boy off your hard drive, get it to the clients, and that's going to involve making some deliverables. So you can see in my session here, I've got in my stem and bus folder, a set of deliverables tracks. These are audio tracks that are input enabled. So I can quickly listen to the 5.1 mix or the 5.1 ME or any of the stems or the stereo mix or the web mix. It's all right there in front of me inside my session. If you don't have this set up, you can grab a template for this on my website. I'll drop a link in the description so you can do that or just make this yourself. I've got videos on how to set this up, but everything's routed to these stems so that my deliverables are all they're like ready to ship out the door at the end of the mix. Um, there's two ways to get files that match these tracks. One of them is just simply recording it out. You, you can see I've got these tracks input enabled. They're record armed. So I can record arm Pro Tools and then hit play. And it's going to, in real time, record the entire selection of the timeline. If it's a 90 minute movie, it's going to take 90 minutes. So a lot of people, instead of doing that, they'll actually do what's called an offline bounce, which is option command B. And you can see I've got this set up to, uh, for the mix sources, these all match these tracks right here. So the way I like to do this, and it's kind of a, I don't know if other people do it this way, but it just makes the most sense to me. I like to initially bounce the project using the offline bounce. So if it's a 90 minute movie, it might take 10, 15 minutes. And then when the inevitable changes come down the road, I will punch in to those offline files. At first it was real risky. I thought, I don't know if these files are gonna match. Is the offline bounce like phase coherent with a real time bounce? And, and on my setup, on my machine, it is. I can punch in destructively to offline files with no ticks or pops or anything like that. So. The, the trick with doing the offline bounce is you do have to organize the files after you export them. And let's see, here we go. So I've got this already set up and you see these little green check marks by the folders. That's because I'm actually exporting these files directly to a synced Dropbox folder. And this is the thing that will save you the most amount of time set the Dropbox app up to where you've got a folder on your hard drive, maybe like your second hard drive, the one without all the sessions on it, where you can print files to. That way, instead of having to drag the files to Dropbox, it's uploading them as they're created and you can just update those files. The cool thing about that, let's say you've got a feature film that's 32 gigabytes and you've got these folders chock full of audio goodness and you gotta do that one little change. Instead of having to delete these, re-upload, label them V2, you can just punch into these files and the only thing Dropbox will update is the changed portion of the audio file. And I've tested this on at least a dozen feature films that I've delivered uh, remotely where I printed the files directly to Dropbox. I treated Drop Dropbox like a tape deck, printed them there and then destructively recorded into the files and all Dropbox did was update like you know a gig of audio instead of 32 or 60 gigs so here's the folder set up 5.1 mix 5.1 mini 5.1 stem stereo versions of all that plus a stereo only web mix and you'll see I'm gonna do I'm gonna show you guys the offline bounce method because it's faster uh, and it's all about you know being efficient with stuff the other thing I did in the offline bounce is I said, after I export these, I want to bring them back into the session. And the reason this is important is, so first let me drag this. This is the stereo web mix. I don't know why it does it this way, but right now all these files match these tracks. So all I have to do is highlight them, control click, drag them up, and they're on my print tracks so that I can destructively punch into these files and they'll be updated. But I got to do some homework first. So let me go back here. Right now what I've got to do is I have to put these files in the folders that they belong in. And you will not have to do this if you do 
a real-time bounce. So these are all stereo stems. Bam. These are all going to be the 5-1 stems. There's dialogue. There's music. And there's sound effects. You want to do this because the last thing the production is going to want to do is have to sort through your garbage and your lack of organization. So put them in the folders. This is what they like to see. There's a stereo m and &E. There's a six track m and &E. There's a stereo mix. Here's the six track mix. And then here's a web mix. Okay. So now when you send these to the production, look at that. Six tracks for the m and &E. Uh, whoops, this one I dragged in the wrong one. That's why you got to check. So this is actually a six track stem. Always double check your work because you're going to mess up. Everybody messes up. Okay, did that actually go where I wanted it to? Okay, dialogue, music, sound effects, and my six track stems. This is a stereo mix, stereo m and &E, stereo stems, dm and &E, and web mix. So right now, these files are printed in my session. I can see the files that I've made. I can send them to the client. And we're going to pretend that I sent these to the client. What I got to do before the client comes back is I have to close my session. So I'm going to save it. I'm going to close it and I'm going to reopen it. Okay, missing files. Ah, what's going on? I can't handle this. I'm very anxious about this. Let's find Pro Tools, automatically find them. Everything's good. Don't worry, we're going to get you to therapy. It's going to be fine. Everything's right there. Great. Okay, you sent the files. They paid your invoice. They come back next week. Man, I'm really sorry to have to do this, but we couldn't we couldn't get that that uh little da baby track and we had to replace it with a crappy Beat Stars beat and we just need you to fix this one club scene for us. Okay, cool. I'm going to charge you for that, but it's going to take me maybe 30 minutes to do. So, Naming the files, you see these are all named V1. What I'm going to do is open this, open my clip list, highlight them, and I'm going to say battery name, and we're going to find V1 and replace with V2. You can also stamp the date on it. Sometimes I like to do that. 240505, let's just say that. Uh, okay, now these files are rename this. Let's check in here and make sure. This is the, the one thing I don't like about this method is Pro Tools doesn't rename them until you do this. Double click, hit OK. Double click, hit OK. Double click, hit OK. Got to do that for each file. I have no idea why it works this way. Um, it's, a, it's just a minor annoyance. And now when I go back here, now they're renamed. You can see Dropbox is updating the folders. That's what this little blue guy means. And uh, they're all named correctly now. So I've renamed them. Uh, to prepare for this change. Now I'm going to highlight, let's say it's a, oh, like a three, just eight second punch, okay? I need to, it, to these offline bounce files, they're input enabled on the tracks, record arm on the track, right click on this record button at the very top and change it to destructive. You want that big old D right in your face. See that big D? That is very important. Get that D up in your face. And now we need to change our pre and post roll. Pre rolls five seconds, post rolls five seconds. Set this value to whatever the length of your longest reverb in the section, session or section is. Um, if you have a 20 second reverb, you're mixing Blade Runner 2043, then go ahead and change that to 23 seconds with a little margin for error, maybe 25 seconds. But five seconds is generally enough for what I do. So pre-roll, it's enabled. Command K is to turn it on and turn it off. This ensures a nice smooth punch. You can see the little orange flag is orange instead of white. Uh, and now this is where the magic happens. So I'm going to arm it and I'm gonna punch into these files. Before I do this though, just to show you that this is no BS, um, you can see this has been created at 917, modified, that's when I renamed it in 923. And now I'm going to punch into that and it should say it's modified at 926 or whenever it finishes. So it's dropped in your record. You can see that the files are read where they're recording. And as soon as it gets past this change, it's gonna drop back out of record 
and the file should be updated. Okay, so you see there's no break in the file. It's destructively baked the change in. And if I go here, you can see it's been modified at 926 and it's already uploaded to Dropbox. So I didn't have to re-upload all the files. Uh, I just had to punch into the files for a 90 or 100 minute film. This makes a huge difference in your upload time, lowers your bandwidth on your um, what you're using for internet, which is good for the environment, less files on your hard drive, less headaches for you, and way faster. So again, the combination is offline bounce, organize the files, and then destructively punch in. And this is all done on your Dropbox. Uh, the other way to do it, and you can see these have, these have audio file folders in them, which is why I don't like to do the, the um, real-time bounce. The other way to do this, if you're old school and you want to do the real-time bounce, which is totally fine, is you need to set your disk allocation for each track. You can see I've already done that. The disk allocation for each of these tracks is set up to uh, the same folders that I'm printing them in. The reason I don't like to do that is because you do end up with this audio files folder, which for me is empty because I haven't recorded anything, but because the tracks were record armed, I think that's probably why it does that. Uh, and I'm going to say delete everywhere because I don't want to see this. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to clean these up. And then this is ready to send to the client. And then if they come back with another change, like if they say, hey man, actually there's more stuff or the QC report comes through and there's a couple of things out of sync or some stuff you gotta fix. All you have to do is just highlight where the change is and punch it in. Remember this needs to be set to that big old D in your face and make sure you have pre and post roll and it just updates the files and you can do as many versions as you want with one set of files that you continually rename in Dropbox. And Dropbox is only going to update the section that you change, which is why I like this. So instead of ending up with 57 gajillion gigs of 87 different files all over the place, it's on your hard drive and then it's on Dropbox and then the client has a copy on their hard drive. It's just all in one central basically cloud uh, that you can destructively update and it makes everybody's lives so much easier. Again, I've used this on at least a dozen features. I've checked the punches. All the punches are clean. There's no ticks or pops and all the changes have translated through Dropbox to the client. So hopefully this works for you. Hopefully it saves you some headache, saves you some time, uh, saves you space on your hard drive and it'll just make your life a lot easier. Again, if you don't have this set up in your session, uh, you can get the template from my website. Um, and I've got other stuff on there too that might help you out. But I just recommend setting this up and working this way if you're doing remote work because it's way easier than having to have a bunch of version tracking and that kind of stuff. It's all just one set of files. So thank you guys for your time. Uh, sorry this video is kind of boring and like housekeeping you know, stuff, but this is the type of thing that'll make you work more efficiently and can end up making you more money and making your clients happier. So I'll see you next time.